when life gives you lumps, make hash browns. <laughs> <laughs> well, as most of you know, uh, Paul and I are full-time RVers. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. <laughs> and we have had some challenges lately on the road. And we... To just... say the least. <laughs> yeah, so we'll put some links down below if you don't know. But we started feeling down. And people, you, all noticed that we were starting to feel down. And we realized we need to do something that makes us happy. Yeah. And hash browns can't help but make you happy, right? It's one. It's my happy place. Yeah, <laughs> and it's one of my happy places to go when I'm when I'm feeling a little little depressed about life. So yeah, yeah, and it's and it's such a simple recipe. It doesn't uh, take a lot of time, and and uh, but but there are some tricks, if you will. Uh, so we will show you exactly when Paul makes them. They're wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So of course you start with a with a good russet potato. Of course peel it. Where we're at right now, we're right on the Washington-Idaho border, so it just seems like the right thing to do to be making hash browns. <laughs> we can see Idaho from our windows, yeah. so yes. And the potatoes are good here. Yes, they are. Hopefully you're not going to show them the whole peeling process. Here. No, but someone's going to talk about your shirt, so why don't you just go ahead and tell people that it is your shirt. You yes. didn't just pay for it. You earned your <laughs> shirt, right? Yeah, this was, uh, I've done, I did a few marathons. My my last, the one I went out with was Boston. I did, I ran Boston. Most races you can sign up and they'll give you a t-shirt whether you show up for the race or not. Uh, Long Beach, you see it says finisher. Um, you only get this shirt when you finish. Okay, so after you're peeling, you rinse it. Yes, you get the uh, potato rinsed. And then you get rid of the peels. Okay, so let's use the big side of the grater. I'm told that the uh, that you can buy them in a box and, and they're kind of de uh, dehydrated. And you soak them, you put them in water and you make them. I haven't tried those. For those of you who have, let me know what you think. Here's one of the things you you really must do if you want crispy hash browns. And this is where, if you are an RVer, it would be helpful if you had sewer hookups so you can just drain your tanks because it does use a lot of water. It's a lot of rinsing, but rinsing is the secret, right? Yes, rinsing is 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 one of the secrets. The other is drying. And you'll see that in a minute. So you're going to rinse these things. I find I find three, sometimes four water baths before they're clean. You can see the water is still a little milky. And you know, I think that's something else to think about if you're thinking about full-time RV living. Is think about what things you enjoy cooking and absolutely bring whatever you need with you on the road because it is, it's a lifestyle and you don't want to give up doing things that you love. Right, I mean that's the, that's a quick path to giving up the life, the life because you, you have to make all these sacrifices. That's why I actually went up from a camper van to a fifth wheel because I missed baking and cooking and I didn't have the counter space, I didn't have the space to carry like my mixer with me. Okay, I'm gonna do these, this is the third time. I'm gonna do them one more time because I just didn't like the look of that water. Can you over rinse them? I don't think so. And how long have you been cooking hash browns, Mr. Paul? Oh, not that long really, about, I don't know, four or five years maybe? Well, if you know how Paul and I met, you know, we were campground neighbors for a, a couple weeks. We both had been on the road solo. And you actually made hash browns one day. I did, yeah. you Remember that? And, you know, we were just hanging out as friends. I actually took the hash browns and ate them by myself in, in my camper, do you remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, hmm, this man can cook. They were so good. So maybe another reason to make hash browns is, you know, to increase your love life, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't, didn't work for me that day. <laughs> no, it didn't, but it took about, it was a five month delay for yeah. us. Okay, so you've got them rinsed and now you're gonna dry them. 
and you're not going to hurt the potatoes. So they don't mash that easily. Easily, you have to cook them. You have to boil them to mash them. So, so don't you don't worry about being gentle. You're what you're worried about or what you're concerned with is getting the water out of them. You really want them as super dry, right? As dry as you can get them. I mean, I don't get obsessive about it, but get them dry. All right, so they are pretty much ready. They are about, about ready to be put in a pan. I prefer cast iron. It's, it's well seasoned, as you can perhaps see here. You're also going to need some clarified butter, also known as ghee. You can make it yourself. I've done it that way. Aldi's has the best price I've found. I think this thing is for this uh, 13 ounce bottle is like $7 or something like that. If you go to the supermarket, I've seen it for as high as $15 for a bottle this size. You're going to use medium high heat. So there's your flame set. There's the flame setting that I use. Like I said, medium high heat. And don't scrimp on the ghee. After it's melted, I give it maybe a minute before I drop them in, just to make sure it's good and hot. All right, I think we're good. I think we're ready. There's the sizzle. I'd say this is more like enough for four or five people. Yeah, right? this this is a this very was, big potato. This was a very big potato. This this is gonna actually this is gonna make it a little hard to turn when it, when we get to the turning stage. This is gonna be a bit of a pain to get turn, flipped over in one piece. And what I do to help that is is separate them now before I put the put before I put the lid on them. So if you're a light eater, um, this will serve six. <laughs> yeah. If you're a robust uh, Sunday breakfast type of guy or gal, this will serve two. Yeah, yeah. We usually we usually can eat this uh, eat this serving and uh, with with a couple of eggs uh, to go with it. All right. You don't pack them down. You just kind of you saw what I did there, and then you. Set the timer for, I'm gonna give them six minutes this morning. One thing you don't wanna do when you put that cover on is don't touch it until the timer goes off. I know that's tempt it's tempting to look, but don't because the potatoes are cooking. They're cooking with the steam that's being trapped by the lid. So that's a big part of it. Just put the lid on it and do something for five or six minutes. So you can see the steam I'm, I was referring to that's going on in there. You're steaming the taters as they're, as they're browning. All right, let's see what we got. This can be the tricky part. Yeah, I'm hoping this isn't burned. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> this is the magic. Oh my goodness. Oh, that one didn't, well, it just shifted a little. You cook them for another three minutes uncovered and, and you're ready to eat. That is just perfect. That, that's ready for the state fair. <laughs> <laughs> Two years of French and all I can say is bon appetit. <laughs> well, I just want to say that sometimes in life you have to hit reset, you know, and if you've had a lot of challenges, do what makes you makes you happy. Choose something fun, whether it's gardening or taking a walk or a bubble bath or making hash browns. There you go. Mm -hmm. So let's dig in, see how these things turned out. Oh my gosh. Life is good. Mm-hmm. Two thumbs up. Mm -hmm. If I don't say so myself. Mm.